Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Mullerian duct anomalies. Before going into Mullerian duct anomalies proper, we should know a few points about the development, uh, embryological development of the female genital system. So this is a basic schematic diagram. This structure here is known as the metanephrose. The thing about metanephrose is it is useful in the formation of the kidneys. There is one more structure, rounded structure present medial to it that will form the primordial gonads. In between these two structures, there are two tube-like structures which are developing from the mesoderm. The one which is lateral, present laterally, is called as the Mullerian duct. And the one which is present medially is called as the Wolfian duct. But if you are not giving them names, see this is medial, this is lateral. So the one which is lateral is called as the paramesonephric duct. Whereas the one which is medial is called as the mesonephric duct. These two structures form two different structures in different forms of the structures in both the different genders. This Wolfian duct M for M, the mesonephric M is for M. So this is important in the formation of male reproductive system. The other one, the para is important in the formation of the female reproductive system. At 6 weeks of age, both these structures, the paramesonephric as well as the mesonephric are present in the fetus at 6 weeks of age. So what happens after 6 weeks of age? In the males, the testis produce a hormone called as the anti-mullerian hormone. And as the name suggests, the anti-mullerian hormone has a negative feedback mechanism on the mullerian duct formation. And because of that, the Mullerian duct which is present laterally undergoes degeneration whereas the Wolfian duct undergoes developmental formation. Whereas in a female, because there is absence of testis, there is no anti-Mullerian hormone present. And once there is no anti-Mullerian hormone present, the Mullerian duct starts forming. And once that is formed, the Wolfian duct undergoes degeneration. So this is, so by the end of 8 weeks, in a female fetus, the Mullerian duct would have developed completely and the Wolfian duct would have regenerated. Now, if you compare this, this diagram to a diagram of a female rep uh, reproductive system, which has a uterus, a cervix, vagina, two fallopian tubes, and the ovaries, you can see that these gonads are here. This part of the mesonephric duct sorry, paramesonephric duct help in the formation of tubes and the lower part, the caudal part which has come medially will help in formation of these part. So, you should remember that Mullerian duct helps in the formation of the tubes, the tubes, hole of the uterine cavity, the cervix and upper two-third of the vagina. So these are the structures formed by a Mullerian duct in a female fetus. In any Mullerian duct uh, process, three things should happen during the formation of the female genital system. First is the Mullerian duct should form. Then once they form, they should fuse. And once they fuse, they should be canalized. Abnormality in any of the three steps leads to Mullerian ductal abnormalities. So the paramesonephric ducts are two different. So once they form, they will be like this with the gonadal structures medial to it, the primordial gonads. Once they come, grow cordially and medially. One, they grow cordially and medially and they fuse in the midline. And there is one more structure which is present downward below this. That is the urogenital sinus and once this cavity which is this part which is formed by fusion of two different paranephric, paramesonephric duct is formed it should fuse vertically and get canalized with the urogenital sinus so these are three steps which should happen so now comparing this with uh, the diagram the uh, very poor schematic diagram of a female rep reproductive system it looks something like this 
so you have the fallopian tubes the ovaries uterine cavity cervix and vagina so with comparing with this these two parts the more cranial part of the paramesophytic duct form the fallopian tube here the fused part here forms the uterus the cervix and upper two third of the vagina and this part of the fused paramesophytic duct which fuses with the urogenital sinus fuses with the lower one third of the vagina and opens into the external environment so now coming to the ductal anomalies if there is abnormality in the formation so only if uh, there is either only one paramesonephric formed or there is no paramesonephric form so defect in fusion can be aplasia or urogenesis this aplasia or urogenesis can happen on both sides that is bilateral or it can happen on only one side if it happens on both sides it will form something called as the mr kh syndrome that is mayer rokitansky kuster hausner syndrome in this there is urogenesis or very rudimentary paramesophytic duct so there is no fallopian tube there is no uterine cavity there is no cervix there is no upper one third upper two third of the vagina but ovaries are present that is why the patients of this mr kh syndrome will have the formation of secondary sexual characters present breast development is there axillary hair pubic hair development is present but they will present with primary amenorrhea because there's no cavity there's no cervix and it's all degenerated and ovaries are actually rudimentary now if it happens unilaterally that is it's only one side imagine this part of paramesonephric duct is absent whereas this is present so it will form something called like this it looks something like this this part there's nothing here this is empty and it will combine with lower one, uh, one third of the vagina so this is called as a unicornuate uterus sorry this is defect in formation not fusion sorry so this is the defect in formation now the next comes if there is a defect in fusion see fusion is happening in two different ways during the fusion of the paramesonephric duct there is a vertical fusion that is the left and the right fuse together okay so in the midline the fusion is occurring in the midline and there is a vertical fusion here that is this part is fusing with the urogenital sinus so these defects can happen either because of vertical fusion defects or a horizontal fusion defects so imagine if this part of mesodefric duct paramesonephric duct has been fully formed and this part has been fully formed and they are fusing here this fusion is not happening if this midline fusion is not happening you will be left the patient will be left with something like this this part is separate this part is separate okay we will leave this this is a whole new thing we are starting okay if uh, there are two different things whereas lower one third of the vagina is a single structure so there are two different uterine cavities there are two different fallopian tubes two tubes two diff separate cavities uterine cavities are separate okay and the cervix is separate and upper one third of vagina upper two third of vagina is separate but they are opening into a single opening below this is called as uterine diadelphis this is if there is no fusion at all okay this is one possibility second possibility is there is fusion there's slight fusion above there's no fusion above but slight fusion and comes below this can also happen so in this you will have two fallopian tubes okay it will look like two uterine cavities but cervix is only one okay cervix is one but two cavities and vagina will be single so this you call it as a bicornuate uterus see a important point to differentiate uterine diadelphus from bicornuate is the lower part that is the cervix and vagina is one in bicornuate uterus the cavities appear two different whereas in diadelphus there's two separate cervix and upper one, two third of the vagina are two different 
So these are two possibilities which can occur if there is midline fusion defect. Okay. Next, the last possibility here is if there is this part of the fusion defect. That is, the paranephron mesonephric has formed properly, midline fusion is adequate, but while fusion with urogenital sinus, this is not happening. This is formation of atresia here. So in that case, the patient will have all signs and uh, the secondary sexual characters will be developed. She will be having actually they will be having no fertility issue but there will be amenorrhea but that amenorrhea is actually not a true amenorrhea because there is a septum present here because of the non-fusion or there's atresia because of that there will be something called hematometra so they will have cyclical pain abdomen cyclical bul suprapubic bulge these all things will be present but primary amenorrhea will be present so these are two things you need to differentiate in this the last part of this video will be including the failures in canalization. So imagine there are two different paramesonephric ducts, they are fusing in the midline. But you should remember that when they fuse in the midline, initially there is a septum present. And this septum has to resolve or dissolve and they had to canalize to form a single cavity. If this does not happen, if this resolve, resolution of septum does not happen, then many, uh, there is a formation of what is called as a septate uterus. Instead of the cavity being a single cavity like this, there is a septum which is present in between, inside the cavity. This septum can extend all the way from the fundus to the cervix or it can remain in parts like this. So it can be present only above. So this is what is called as a septate uterus. When a laparoscopy is done, on the surface of the septate uterus, there will be a white color structure which is seen from the superior view because this septum is a ovascular band and hence it looks white on color when it is seen in a laparoscopic picture. This septate uterus will hinder in the implantation of the fetus, uh, sorry, embryo and hence this can lead to repeated abortions, mid trimester, uh, it can lead to early abortions or it can also lead to intrauterine growth retardation of the fetus because there is no much place for the fetus to develop. So this septum has to be removed. It can be done using a hysteroscope. So this is an important uh, defect in the canalization. So this video covered the different anomalies associated with the mullerian duct formation. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.